Hello everyone, my name is Seth and I'm part of the HIPPO Steering Committee. Today, I'll be taking you through our data collection platform, which is RateCap, and how to use it. So as a collaborator, after signing up for the study, you should have received an email um, from RateCap, which has also uh, alongside an assigned um, username for you, for which you should then um, create a password for your account. And once you've done that, you should be brought to this page for which you can then put in your username and your password and then click login. So once you're in Recap, what you should see is under my projects, there will be this line here, so Hippo Data Collection. You click on that. And then you come to this page, which you should then go to here, so add or edit records. And you click on this green button here, edit new record. So once you're in here, you should then see the data collection instrument and there'll be pre, intra and post-operative data fields for you to fill in. So looking at the pre-operative data, there is the period for which you should select which is appropriate uh, for the data collection period which you're doing. And then you've got patient demographics as well. Um, and a lot of the data points here are self-explanatory. As you can see here, patient's age, sex, height and weight. Um, and also the patient's ASA grade. If let's say you're unsure as to what that is, you can click on this. And click on the icon would then bring up this tab for you to then see what an ASA grade is. And then you can assess and see which one is appropriate for your patient. If you're unsure, we would recommend for you to consult with your local surgeon or anesthetist uh, for the patient's ASA grade. However, assuming if there's no evidence of the ASA grade being um, assess or recorded, you can then select this option for not recorded. And then coming down, we've got smoking status as well, and also the patient's comorbidities. For most of the data points here, you should only be able to select one of the options, except for data points with these boxes. And there's also the indication for you to tick all that apply. So that means the patient may have chronic kidney disease and cerebrovascular disease, and you should take whichever one that applies to the patient. Coming down to pre-operative data, a lot of the points here are also self-explanatory. Um, just be sure to be careful and uh, that and to make sure that the data that you're being uh, that you're transferring or recording um, from the patient's notes or from the paper case report forms is being transferred correctly onto the RAC. And once you're done with all of this, only when you have completed all of the data points here, should you then change this to complete. Assuming if you haven't completed all of it yet, you should then leave it as incomplete. And the reason why that is so is because, let's say if you leave it as incomplete, and let's say we go on to the next form. So first things first is when you go on to the next form, um, and RACAP will be able to tell you which data points have yet to be filled. So these are the ones of which we didn't fill any of them in the previous page. So that's why RACAP is reminding us. But let's just say that if we have filled all of it, and I'm just going to click no and go to the next form. So now we are in the second form, which is the intraoperative data fields. And because we have left it as incomplete, that's why it appears as red. And that's important as a reminder for you to go back and to fill in whatever missing data points that have yet to be filled. And let's say after you have finished all of the data points, uh, after you have finished completing all of the data points that are required and you change it to complete, only then this will be changed to green in color. So as long as this hasn't been changed to green, it means that you should go back and fill up any missing data points that there is. So coming to the intraoperative data fields, a lot of the points here are also self-explanatory. Um, you should be able to get most of these data from the patient's notes, um, including maybe consulting with your local surgeon or anesthetist for some of the questions here, such as the use of reusable gowns, reusable drapes, and the recycling of waste, which may or may not be recorded in the, operate, uh, the operative notes. And then moving on to the next form, which is the 30-day follow-up. So this is quite a short form, essentially just looking at whether was the patient assessed um, within 30 days after follow-up, whether they had any surgical side infections, reoperation, as well as how long was their length of stay um, after the surgery. 
So that should be all of it. And let's say we go to here, the record status dashboard. This will be able to tell you what are the uh, the statuses for your patients they have collected. So for the benefit of this video, let's say we have these four patients. Um, patient number two here is an example of a patient that has all the data fields being completed, uh, which is why it all shows up as green. For patient number five, we have looked at the pre- and intraoperative data fields and we have left it as incomplete so therefore it comes up as red. For the post-operative data fields, we didn't fill anything in as well as we didn't change the status at the bottom of the form to incomplete. We didn't change it. Um, we didn't leave it as incomplete or complete, which is why it appears as a blank button here. But essentially, what you want at the end of your whole data collection period is for all of your patients to have green dots here for each of their data fields. So that is what collaborators should be working towards. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions about RateCap or how to fill in data collection performer, please do not hesitate to reach out to us through our RateCap email um, at hippo.ratecap at gmail.com. So that should be it, and thank you very much.